Hey family, it's Coach Josh. Welcome to another daily play with yours truly. And of course, you're in the middle of uh, of a series uh, of videos, a set of videos that I'm going to be creating that's uh, anchored and rooted in my book, my newest book, my seventh book, Counterfeiter Counterpart, How to Continuously Discern a Difference in Every Area of Life. And this is the third video. In this video, we're going to talk about what to actually test, what to actually look for, and what to actually observe before you serve, right? So let's get right into I always do this in every video. Before we do, if you're watching this video for the very first time and you're like, yo, this guy speaking truth, this guy speaking facts, I like the vibe. If you like the vibe, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you part of my community here on YouTube or wherever you listen, whether it's on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen, wherever you're watching, I'd love to have you part of my community and let's walk down this path together and so that we can feel and, and, and uh, fulfill our purpose and, and know the will of God for our lives. So go ahead and subscribe. I love to have you part of my community. For those who's been rocking with me for a long time, whether you've been subscribed for 12 years, two months, two weeks, or two days, or two minutes ago, I want to say thank you for being a part of my community here on YouTube or wherever you're a part of my community on the many platforms that I that I have product and SERP and um, resources. So I want to say thank you so much for being a part of my community. As everyone is coming in and watching this video, man, make sure you like comment and share help this video get some traction so we can also help people discern the differences between a counterfeit and a counterpart in all the areas of their lives let's get right into what to actually test in this section i'm going to show you what to observe when you're presented with options that are after your time energy care stewardships and targets now before you serve you must observe these four things and of course again coach used the acronym to spell the word test before you serve that person that thing before you entertain it observe is t temperament e in the end result s scriptural supports and lastly t the time let's get right into uh the temperament um the bible says you will know a tree by its fruit and below, I will show you the obvious fruit that is mostly evident when dealing with counterfeits and counterparts. And I know you've been watching these videos. And you're like, well, what is a counterfeit, coach? What is a counterpart? In the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about in depthly what a counterfeit is and what a counterpart is. And then we're going to go into deeper parts of the book as well. Now, let's start with temperament. Of course, I'm reading from my book, Counterfeit or Counterpart, and pulling from it, extrapolating from it um, principles that I think will help us or help you, help us for sure, me too, how we can test. Now, temperament is a person's or thing's character, nature, or disposition. Everyone has tendencies that are hard to hide. Ooh. Don't forget that. A person's temperament is a person's temperature. That is why it is essential to always be set on joy and set on contentment so it becomes easy to spot one's temperament. That is very important. Those who put themselves on depression or set themselves on depression or always set themselves on sadness or always set themselves on envy, lust, and things like these will not be able to recognize the counterfeits around them. When you are set on God and set on the right things, you will find it easy to identify a person's tendencies or temperament or temperature. How a person reacts under pressure or being denied what they truly want from you will reveal a lot to you about who sent them. How it's sent will tell you a lot about who sent them or sent it. Satan pressures and uh, Satan pressures and everything sent by him will do so also. Everything from God comes with peace and assurance and everything from him will embody his character. How is he approaching you? How is she approaching you? How are they approaching you? Are they peaceful, gentle, understanding, kind, patient, etc.? Or are they pressuring, pulling, impulsive, impatient? In order to know the difference, you must let God be the difference in your life. Because when he's a difference in your life, then you'll be set on joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. In his presence, there's a fullness of joy. A person who's always set on joy will be able to always set the temperature. Those who are in God's joy, no matter what room they go in, they can set the temperature. Also, they can perceive the temperature. But those who are always set on extreme emotions, extreme happiness, or extreme sadness, or always set, and that becomes a set disposition, they won't be able to they won't be able to recognize the different people who are trying to gain position in their lives. You right now 
got to assess, am I able to discern the temperature? How was that young man approaching you? How's that woman approaching you? How was that job approached to you? See, most of us, we're not sensitive enough to the spirit to even notice the subtle tendencies of people. Every person has tendencies. But if you are so set on 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 trendencies and you want to have what is trendy and want, want to have what everybody else has, you will be blinded to the subtle tendencies that are in a person's life that will say, oh, snap. That person's not for me. All red flags are obvious. I'm telling you, there's not one red flag that can't be seen. All red flags are obvious, but not everyone is willing to see it. Most people, they see it, but ignore it because they want to be trendy. They want to have what everyone has. But a person who wants to be in the will of God and to flow in the will of God are people who say, I have the capacity of the Holy Spirit of God to spot even the subtle tendencies. If you can't treat people beneath you well, I can't partner with you. There are certain principles that you have to be guided by in the word of God so that you will be able to say, ah, I spot how you treated that person or I spotted your eye and that when I'm looking you eye to eye, you looking at every girl side by side, all right? And you can't, I can't even keep your eye contact. You will be able to spot everything because people cannot hide their tendencies. We are creatures of habit and everyone has habits but you got to have the, the the fullness of the spirit of God and it depends on where you're able to say I can spot this person's temperature is this person's temperature trying to bring me down or bring me higher than I need to be if someone is so is there is there a temperature trying to bring you in in idolatrous happiness or bring you down to sadness you got to be able to say I'm steadily set on joy because at that setting I can determine where everyone else is setting is set and I know where I need to be and where I need to go let's go to end result next you must examine the end result what will happen if you do or accept X y or Z what are the corresponding outcomes? It is always important to count the costs and think three moves ahead. When you give yourself time to consider what's in front of you through, you will see its holes or its ability to hold. Mm. That's why it's crucial to be content and not eager to have anything or everything. Satan's system feeds off the eager and impulsive because he knows they will not take their time to count the costs or examine the immediate or inevitable consequences before you begin, think about his end. In order um, to properly test, in order for you to have God's best, you got to always consider what is the end result of this. If I continue to engage in the relationship, what would be the end result? If I continue to engage in this friendship, what would be the end result? If I do this, what would be the end result? See, most consequences will, are, will never be in the first move. The first move is tempting you into the environment that is, that is going to try to build the lust and the enticement in you to cause you to be comfortable enough to, uh, to, uh, uh, to build an appetite to eat an addiction, right? See, he wants you in these environments because he knows these environments will build an appetite that's going to make you attach yourself to his counterfeits. And he knows that if he can hide the consequence, not in the first move, not in the second move, but have it rooted in the third move, by the time you get to the third move, you're now addicted to it now. And now you're surrounded by his consequences, keeping you from being productive and pursuing your purpose. You always got to think three moves ahead. You got to always think, how would this look to the people who look up to me? How would this look to my family? How would this look to, to God? And, and not only how it looked to God, how it, how it is evident and prevalent in front of the eyes of God. You always got to think about the end result. If I do this, what will be the, uh, the, the, the consequences that will come in his life? And it says, before you begin, you got to think about his end. Enemy, our enemy always finds or seeks after the people who are eager and impatient because he knows if they can't count the cost, they will eventually suffer for not counting the cost. Let's go to scripture support. Next, you must examine if it is supported by scripture. Very, very pivotal. If it's not supported by scripture, then it will not support you. 
It is God's promise that ultimately supports us, not the false promises of people. If it if it contradicts scripture, it will bring conflict into your life. What does the word of God say about the fruit of the people in your life? What does it say about the patterns or practices you are tempted to engage in? It's very important. Is this thing supported by scripture? You got to always say, if I don't automatically know what the scripture says about this, I'm going to seek to see what the word of God says about this. If it doesn't give you time to think it through, then it's not for you. Anything that God sends your way doesn't matter how long you take to make a decision. Anything that comes to you impulsively, forcing you to make a decision, no, we need a decision right now, but won't give you the time to make a decision, that thing is not sent by God. God is patient. God is gentle. God is not going to force you to be with him. God's not going to force you to do anything. He's going to give you the time you need to find faith and confidence in him to pursue what it is that he wants you to pursue. And like it says, if it's not supported by scripture, it will not be supported by you. So you got to look at this relationship and say, is this man rooted in the word of God? Is this woman pursuing the things of God? Is this relationship in the things of God? Is this friend in the things of God? Is this career, is this thing rooted in the things of God? What does the scripture say about this ambition, about this idea, about this pursuit, about this relationship, about this young woman, about this young man? What does it say about me? Because if you're not supported by scripture, you won't be able to see the scriptures or the lack thereof in another person. That's why it's pivotal the word of God for yourself. Because if it's not supported by scripture, my friend, it won't be supported by you or you won't be supported by it. Last but not least, timing. You got to see if it's the right time for you. Let's read. Is it the right time? God will not send anything into your life that you are not mature enough to hold. If it's in your life a week after a wound was created, then it was then it is not for you. If it comes and you are too eager about it, then it's not for you. If it's in front of you and you know you are not mature enough to manage it, it was not sent by God. God would never send anything or anyone into your life that will be in direct conflict against his spirit's work in your life or in you. God's timing is perfect and you must trust it. God loves you too much to give you everything you desire prematurely. He is too good to provide you with anything that he knows you want more than him or will put before him. Counterfeits will always try to fit itself into your time prematurely, while counterparts will always be a part of the times for you. Want it when God wants you to have it. It's very important for you to understand God's timing, my friend. And this was one of the things that I really despised about God in my early or mid-20s. I was like, God, I want it now. I don't care when you want me to have it. I want it now. And the only reason why I wanted it so so I can show people that I got it and that I was better or whatever, whatever. But you got to be able to say, is this the right time for me? Will I make an idol of this? If, it's, if it comes a week after you have been wounded, if a man comes to your life after you have been wounded by another man, young lady, trust me, God didn't send that man your way. If that woman is in your life after you have been wounded by another woman, then that woman is not the woman for you. If you are still wounded, God is not going to bring anything into your life that's whole if it knows that you got holes in your life. God is not going to pour his blessing. Do you hear me? There's a difference between his grace, his sufficiency, his support versus things that you he's trusting you to support in your position in that thing in that person's life. But he's not going to pour a woman in your life, a, a wife in your life, a husband in your life. He's not going to pour opportunities in your life if it knows it's going to be wasted and leaked out of you. So if you know that you can't hold it, chances are you're being forced to try to hold it. And the enemy is trying to bring that thing in your life to cause your hands to be more preoccupied trying to hold something that your hands are not strong enough to hold. Is it God's timing for you? If you know that it ain't your time, then it's a counterfeit. If you have been proven ready, even if you know you're ready, I will still consult God and say, God, this is your time. Because you can be ready for a long period of time, but it's not God's perfect time for you to have it. In order to properly test, in order for you to be your best, in order for you to fulfill the rest of the things that God has for you, you must test its temperament. You must test the end result. You must test the scriptural support or if it's supported by scripture and you must test the timing. 
My friend, if you make this a part of your repertoire, if you make this a part of your daily engagements of life, my friend, you won't have any counterfeits in your life. I have activities in my book and you can get my book today on Amazon, Counterfeit or Counterpart, How to Continuously Discern the Difference in Every Area of Your Life. You can get that book right now and go through the activities and really utilize them when testing the people and things in front of you. Because my friend, right now you have either counterfeits or counterparts in your life and you got to make sure you take your time and your life seriously. And you got to say, what is this person's temperament? What is this person's temperature? What is the end result if I engage in this thing? Is this thing supported by scripture? And is this the right timing? Because my friend, when you do this, man, you will always be spot on in what God wants you to fulfill and do in your life. I hope this video was a blessing to you. Hope it gave you some, some clues, some insight. I hope the book is also a, a, a tool and a resource for you. And let me know. Tweet. Tweet me, Facebook me, Instagram me. Let me know what you're getting from these videos and what you're getting from the book. And I and I hope it, it leads you to the ultimate book, the Word of God. Man, in the back of that book, I have hundreds, if not maybe a thousand scriptures that will help you go back and say, is this thing I'm testing supported by the Word of God? I love y'all, man. Run these plays well. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.